Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. I'm having a great one so far. Uh, my oldest scored a goal in his soccer match this morning. Everton stole another three points, starting off three for three in matches this season. And uh, all in all, it's been a great day. I guess, by the way, if you guys are new, my name is Akil Stokes. I'm a Forex trader, trading coach, one of the co-founders over at tier1trading.com and the host of the Trading Coach Podcast. And this is a weekly video that I do here on YouTube showing you a little bit of what's on my radar for the week to come, giving you a little bit of a, a lesson on technical analysis and of course, or at least hopefully, touching on other aspects that will help you continue and, and, and navigate your, your path to becoming a consistently profitable trader. If you guys are interested in some more free education, make sure you check out our website, www.tier1trading.com. We have a cool 14-day trial on the platform that you can use to get some free training to or $1 training, I guess, and network with our community, download some software and, and do a whole bunch of other fun stuff. We also have a cool free workshop called the Ascension Webinar, which uh, I recommend each and every newer trader uh, take. It's, it's gonna get you on the right path, especially from a mindset perspective and help you uh, really navigate a lot of the junk that is out there on the internet. Now. Before we get into the charts today, I wanna rant a little bit um, because I, I just got a message on Instagram from a trader that was saying, let me just read this real quick, and I don't mean any way to offend this trader, it's just a, a common question, but the question is, um, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah from blah, 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 I need help with Forex education, can you give me a Forex strategy? And uh, I bring this up because I, I just put out a podcast this week, episode 395, called The Quick Fix, won't help you improve. And it was kind of talking about how so many traders, they don't want to invest the time or the energy in learning how to trade. Rather, they just want the quick fix. Give me the strategy. Give me the system, right? Let me buy the, the $20 EA that will bring me profits. And you could talk to anybody out there. How many times has that actually worked? How many times is just being given a strategy without doing any work on your own right actually worked? And the answer is going to be zero, right? And trust me, we've done it before in past uh, educational companies that I worked with where we had a, a basically a, a, an automated system. It wasn't fully automated, more like level two, but it gave you a green light on when to buy, a red light on when to sell, and people still loss money, right? So more importantly, obviously trading psychology is key, um, but really the ability to learn how to trade is more important because if you learn how to trade, you can go about either developing your own system or strategy that fits around your philosophies and, and views on the market, which is gonna help with trading psychology because it's extremely difficult to do something that you don't believe in. That was a lot of, of my story when I went for the quick fix, I admit it, yep, and I was trading something that I didn't really believe in. And each time I lost, right, those thoughts would creep back. Well, you know, it shouldn't be doing this anyway. And then that crack got bigger and bigger and bigger until your eventual psychological meltdown. So when you can learn how to trade and develop something that really suits you, I'm not even talking about your lifestyle, but just suits your philosophy on the market, it's going to be a massive help in dealing with that trading psychology and really shifting that thought process from, you know, results, results, results oriented to process oriented. It also gives you the ability to either test the strategy that you've been given and make tweaks. Maybe you are given a strategy. You need the ability to test it, make sure it works on the markets and the time frames and the pairs that you're trading. You also may need to make tweaks to either suit your lifestyle or, or suit your personality or, or even when you're trading it live, have the ability to kind of evolve it and make tweaks. I had this conversation, and this is going to be a longer rant than expected now, so sit tight. But I had this conversation a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if it was with a trader. I think it was a trader uh, as well who sent me a message. And, you know, I always talk about a, a consistent evaluation process in your trading. You should always be doing reviews. You should always be adapting to different market conditions. And we got in a little bit of a debate where it's like, well, what's the point of historical testing if you're going to adapt anyway? And that's just called reality, right? Markets, market conditions change, right? We go through high volatility times, low volatility times, um, times of, of consolidation, times of directional movement, and you need to be able to adjust. You need to be able to look back at your strategy, review and analyze and critique yourself to make sure it's doing what it needs to be doing. And if it's not, you may need to make minor adjustments. And for you guys that are new, we're not talking like 
you make an adjustment every week. I'll, I'll give you an example. It typically takes me six months minimum to make any type of adjustment. It's going to be more like nine or 12. Um, but you do have to evaluate your process because guess what? No one else is going to do it for you. And if you don't, if you don't know how to trade, right, you, you can't make those observations. You, you can't make an adjustments real quick. This guy just hit me back. Um, so I said, Hey, a Forex strategy isn't going to help you. You need to learn how to trade first. Um, okay, sir, what do you mean by trade first? I have a few monthly something. I, I use a basic market now. Okay, so I'll, I'll get I'll get back to them. Um, what easily should I have learned? Again, easily, easily. We, we want to avoid that easy, that easy path. It, it was, uh, you know, I was talking to, I was doing a podcast um, on Friday, Thursday or Friday, it was Thursday, with um, uh, Top Step Traders. And, and we were talking a little bit about the different dynamics that we're in right now and how... You know, this is a golden period for anyone that is a trader or an investor because this is, especially from the investing standpoint, this is a, a period where you can't lose, right? I, I you can lose. Let me get that wrong. It's very, it's much easier to win, right? Because there's a lot of very, very good companies, a lot of really, really good stocks that are being offered at like a 50% discount. And this is kind of similar to the period when I first got involved in the market in about 2000 nine period where we had that recession and you know i was involved in trading around 2007 so i saw things at kind of the the peak at the time the peak of price and then i saw the big crash and i saw just a bargain bin and i was able to take advantage of that opportunity and we're seeing the same thing right now in the market with the with the COVID. and we said this is a a, a golden time to start creating some generational wealth because you can get a hold of some very good opportunities for very cheap prices. You can basically buy double of what you were going to buy before, whether you're just investing in an index um, or whether you're investing in, in individual stocks. And being able to do that, even if you're in a different market, and we're going to look at a few different markets today, takes the skill of learning how to read a price chart. It's not just a, a strategy that is given to you, right? Because if that strategy no longer works in these type of market conditions, you're screwed. You're out of luck. So, I can't put a bigger emphasis on the, the skill of trading is the most important thing because it gives you the ability to do everything where just learning a strategy gives you the ability to do one thing. Rant done, I promise. Let's get to some charts. Um, let me get a quick swig and then we'll hop over to some charts. So we're going to start here in the Forex market on the Euro Yen daily, and we're going to hop into some other markets, um, mainly because what we've been tracking throughout the week hasn't really changed. But I thought this was a cool opportunity because this is still a trade that is on my radar. It's been on my radar since Monday. We've done absolutely nothing, um, but that doesn't mean the trading opportunity is gone. And that's another thing about newer traders, right? Newer traders think there there always needs to be an opportunity or they have to be buying and selling at every given time, right? Where professional traders understand that good opportunities don't come too often. It's really a game of patience. It's a game of identifying your setup, going through that ritual, that routine of, of, of stops and targets and making sure it's a good trade. Then it's waiting to see if it actually happens. A lot of the time, it doesn't happen. You have to you know make a new analysis or, or just delete your charts. Um, but Typically, patience pays, whether it's waiting for entry or whether it's actually being involved in a trade and, and giving it time to fulfill um, its prophecy, right? Fulfill its, its targets. But what we're looking at here on Euro Yen is a few things. And you can class this in, in many different ways. You can call it a flag pattern. You can call it a descending triangle. You can, you can call it you know, just a, a low and tight flag, I guess. Essentially, what happened is this, though. We have consolidation. We have a directional move, very similar to Euro Dollar where we kind of shelved off here at the top. We put in a head and shoulders type of pattern, a consolidation right here. And then we ended up breaking and closing out of this range, so a little bit of distribution here. And then to end the week, you can see the last four days, we essentially went sideways, right? We have a few inside bars here as well, which is uh, basically saying on a lower time frame, this is going to look like a range. Now, we know that the market does, it has a, a, a history of doing this, right? It contracts and then it expands. It contracts and then it expands, right? It goes into areas of consolidation and then it goes into directional movement, right? Here's a good example, directional movement and then consolidation, right? And when you get these tight areas of consolidation, I always envision it being like a spring, right? The market is crunching, 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 crunching up. Eventually it's going to get to a point where that spring can't get any tighter and boom, it's going to break out. Now, the magic question is, right? 
which way will it break out to the upside or the downside? And there are ways to take advantage of both of them. In this particular case, I have a bearish bias, right? And it's uh, for two reasons. One, overall, the location where we're at in regards to previous structure. Um, it's also the directional move that occurred before it, right? We're coming off of a, a very strong directional move that broke a significant level of structure. And now we're consolidating to the downside is the path of least resistance. So I've been looking for a bearish breakout on this pair all week. And if we go down to a lower time frame of four hour, you're going to get a little bit of a, a, a better clue, right? It, it's very similar to a descending triangle. The fact that our lows are essentially the same here. So we're, we're hitting the same level of support on the downside. Boom, 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 boom. However, each time we push up, if I can find the right drawing tool here, each time we push up, right, you see our highs are getting lower and lower and, and lower. And those are small clues that allow me to make the prediction that price is likely to break out to the downside. Now, if you want a, a comparable right here, take a look at pound yen. Now, I've been personally staying away from pound because of the Brexit stuff that's going on. I want no parts of it. But you can see we saw the same thing here, right? We put in a rising channel. We broke out of structure. To the downside, we put in this area of consolidation, one, two, three, four days, and then we eventually broke out to the downside here. And you can even see there was a secondary, well, you can't see it now, I'll show you in the four hour. There was a secondary opportunity to get it to take advantage of this, right? So not only did we break out, let me just delete this to make it clear. Not only did we break out to the downside, right? Here's our range. Not only did we break out to the downside, we came up. We retested previous structure, got to the midway point of that channel, and then continued back. So um, giving different different opportunities, especially if you're someone that looks for a pullback trade. So keep an eye on Euro Yen. We may see something similar here, looking for a potential bearish breakout here on this pair. So next, we're going to hop over to the dollar index. And if this chart looks familiar, it's probably because you have been looking at either the euro dollar, um, which is essentially the inverse of the dollar index, or you're looking at the dollar Swiss, which essentially is the inverse of the euro dollar, which means it looks similar to the dollar index. But this is another opportunity very similar to the euro yen, um, where we don't necessarily have that consolidation. We don't necessarily have that range, but you can see the same type of action happened here, right? We've seen a lot of dollar weakness across the board um, for the past, what, few months now. And now things are starting to change, right? There's a lot going on in the world. Um, but more specifically, there's a lot going on over in the UK as well, especially with this kind of second wave coronavirus fear and, and, and the, the things that are taking place to kind of not avoid it. I don't even know what the right word is to you know, the, the, <laughs> the things that are taking place because of it. I, you're not avoiding it. You know, I'm not going to get into that. But so we're starting to see a little bit of a shift where now all of a sudden there's a little bit of fear coming into the market and with the dollar being the, the safe haven, we're seeing some cash flood back into the dollar. I'm sure things will get worse here and we'll see some dollar weakness eventually. But as of right now, there's been more positive news for the dollar, if you can believe it, than there has been um, with other currencies, especially with some of our FOMC members um, coming out speaking positively in the last week. Regardless of that, from a technical standpoint, here's what we have, right? We have price action consolidating, right? Very similar to Euro Yen, where we had this channel at the end of a, a downward move. And then you can see that we went ahead and we broke above it. Now, we already came to our first stopping point, which I thought would be right here, right? The lows of this area, our, our first level of inside structure. Um, our next stopping point is going to be a little bit higher right here. You can see how I do this. I look for areas of structure. Structure, if you guys are new, is kind of the back, not, not kind of, it is the backbone of my trading philosophy. So we spoke earlier about kind of doing stuff that you believe in, doing stuff that really fits your mindset. Um, everything I do on a chart is based off structure, whether it's why I take the trade, whether it's how I make predictions, whether it's stop losses, whether it's targets, it all centers around structure. And because I believe structure is so powerful, it gives me great confidence when I do analysis and when I trade. Doesn't mean that structure has to be that way for you. You can find whatever you want. You can do uh, trend lines, moving average, Fibonacci, pivot points, um, psychological numbers, different indicators, it doesn't matter. The, the key is whatever it is, right? You wanna work your trading style around that if you wanna stay in the right uh, trader mind state. So we're looking at a little bit of a breakout of this uh, this consolidation period. And again, we came to the first point that I thought we'd see a stopping 
um, or, or a, a kind of a, a halt. And it wouldn't surprise me if we saw a little bit of relief. If we add some more to this, uh, give me a second, let's just take this leg and clone it. You're going to see that we have a potential AB equal. We do. We did have an AB equal CD move here, right? Let's just take this, grab it on here. This is going to be called an AB equal CD pattern or a, a one to one measure move. Essentially, it's a first extension followed by a retracement or a pullback. And then the second extension is of equal length. Um, this is something that I attempted trading when I first learned how to trade because it was very easy for me to copy and paste something. Take my advice. Do not try and trade every single ABCD pattern in the market because you will lose a lot of money really, really quickly. Trust me. <laughs> I should write a book, The Things I Did Wrong, The Things I Learned While Losing Money in the Market. Um, but I guess that's why, you know, I think that's one of the reasons I'm such a great coach now is because I've been through all of it myself. I'm not just, not just giving you textbook stuff. I'm, everything I teach is based off of personal experiences, a, a lot of bad personal experiences that are now coming in handy as we, as we work with other traders. Um, but the combination of that AB equals CD pattern um, and that level of structure uh, lends to me to think that uh, we may see a little bit of relief in the market. We may see some... Um, you know, some buy, some profits being taken at this level, we may see a little bit of a retracement. Now, one thing about the AB equals CD pattern that's uh, not often discussed is a lot of people focus on the A to B, which is this first move right here, and the B to C, which is that move right there. Um, or excuse me, the, the C to D, which is that second move. Nobody really focuses on this inside move. And typically what you'll see, or sometimes what you'll see is if the market is moving very harmonically, is you'll see an equal length retracement as well, meaning that the retracement of the move after that AB equals CD pattern will be um, the same length of the retracement uh, or the retracement after the completion of the AB equals CD pattern, excuse me, will be of equal length of the retracement that came within the AB equals CD pattern. And, you know, again, that's not enough by itself. But if we combine that with, say, you know, spring a Fibonacci on from our C to our D leg right here. Let's bring another one on from our entire AB equals CD pattern completion. You combine that with some Fibonacci confluence and you start to give yourself a nice little zone, right? We take that down to a four hour time frame because again, what did I say is most important? Structure. We look at previous structure resistance, right? The highs of this initial channel that we had here, right? This consolidation. And we look at how price reacted at this level right here, right? This was kind of the, the final blow and breaking above it where, again, if we look at consolidation starting right here, this was the zone where, boom, we broke above this first level. We consolidated a little bit in the high and tight flag type formation and then broke above again and then we went off to the races. If we return down to this level, this would be a good area where I think we could see the same type of hold and we can start gearing up for that next move higher. So keep an eye on a, a bullish pullback trade here on the dollar index. So the last thing we're going to look at today is going to be the Dow Jones. And remember the theme of, of today's, I guess, um, not workshop, this uh, weekly video is going to be the skill of technical analysis and, and how if you master the skill of technical analysis, you can use it different ways across different markets. And, you know, we also, you know, we often get kind of labeled as pattern traders because advanced pattern formations, your, your Gartley's, Bat, Cypher, stuff like that is something that I started off trading um, after I was really, really bad. I got good trading patterns and then added kind of the older stuff back to my arsenal once I had a better understanding of the market. And people always ask, do patterns work in different markets? And the answer is yes. Now, they work differently, right? Because you typically, most of your patterns are going to come in areas of consolidation. Why we talk about them more so in the Forex market is because the Forex market tends to consolidate a lot more than your different indexes or, or the stock market, right? The stock markets are typically more directional. So you're going to see less patterns or less consolidation or breakouts of that consolidation sooner. But they still work, but you have to be good at identifying the overall kind of mood of the market. But when you see periods of consolidation and, and you can use these in different ways, strictly as patterns or using yourself to you know position yourself in a trade, you can still take a look at these advanced pattern formations in other markets. We have a good example right here as we're just coming off two patterns and, and we'll start with the one that previously formed, right? We had a nice Gartley pattern, a deep one right here. X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, right? Now, how many of you guys saw that? 
probably not a lot. You probably looked at this and said, oh, this is just complete junk. The market's kind of, you know, putting in a falling channel and then we popped up and then we came back down and then we didn't extend any higher. Then we came back down again, just a bunch of junk. Well, for someone that was a pattern trader, well, look, that's a decompletion. It's a little bit deeper than that, actually. If I just, just eyeball it right there, let me just draw it on for real. Decompletion is going to be right down here. This is going to give you an extremely good buying opportunity, especially if you're someone looking to get long, right? Because your stop loss is going to be below structure. Let's say you have a higher time frame target, right? You've got a really good entry reason to position yourself in the bullish direction if, if that was something that you were looking to do. Going back, we have another pattern setting up as well. This one's going to be a bearish one. So maybe you have the opposite opinion or maybe you're just taking advantage of consolidation. We're actually going to have a bearish bat pattern setting up here as well. It's going to look like this. Swing high to swing low. X to A, this initial move. A to B, right? So the same kind of start of that pass pattern. B to C. And then we're looking at a CD completion right up here at 886. So if you're someone that's looking to take advantage of a retest of our structure highs right here, saying that, hey, we're probably going to see some more bouncing. This is an excellent opportunity to get involved, especially if you're someone that takes uh, or, or wants to take more of an aggressive entry. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. That's the best way you can support the video. If you guys are brand new, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell as well. That way you don't miss my next upload. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. As you know, I look and respond to each and every one of them. And many of your comments also inspire podcast episodes, right? The Trading Coach Podcast is something I've been doing for a few years now, and it's, I like to look at it as a for you, by you type of podcast, meaning it's not something where I'm, bring, I'm just doing interviews of other traders and how good they are. I'm trying to cover content that you guys reach out to me about, so content that is important to you, and we've had very, very good success doing that. So hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I'm going to go cook some dinner for the wife and kids. I'll see you guys, uh, Tier 1 members, I'll see you guys back for a normal Q&A this Monday. Last, year, uh, last week we did the daily chore. Um, the rest of you guys, I'll, I'll see you out on social media land, and I'll see you right back on this channel next week for another video. Take care.